Hi, everybody. Uh, that's premature. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> Welcome to Way Too Broad, a place for friends to talk about things that make them sound crazy. I'm Hannah, and these are my co-hosts, Aaron and Ben. Hi, Aaron. Howdy doody. <laughs> I feel like I already need to rewrite the intro. We're like 12 episodes in, and I'm tired of it. This is how much... <laughs> Hi, Ben. Hi. <laughs> Howdy doody. Howdy doody. Um, there, <laughs> there's only one rule here on Way Too Broad. That rule is you have to be excited about the thing you're talking about i have a feeling that we're gonna have to broaden the term excited this week but that's spoilers Ooh, spoiler Spoiler for later okay what kind of wine aaron is it is it beaujolais no 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 we're not drinking that until me and my parents are together on on uh on uh saturday Uh, do you have any other drinks yeah i do I have, I have um, a cranberry lime seltzer that I have to open. Mm. Ah, fresh. <laughs> and I have a, um, I wanted some caffeine, but for some reason I didn't make a cup of coffee. I made this tea I found that I really like. Oh. It's my new favorite tea in the whole world. It's called espresso chai. Whoa. Oh. And so it's a black tea, chai tea, but it also has espresso in it. And it, um... It takes care of my normal problem with tea is that I resent it for not being coffee. Because it's, like, also coffee. That's good. Yeah. What are you drinking, Hannah? I have, um, this. Mm. Which, for those who can't see, it looks like pond water in a martini glass. Is that that drink? <laughs> is that that yeah. one drink? I don't know what drink you're referring mm. to. Let me try to remember it. The really old one with gin. And and uh, chartreuse. No, no, it's not. It's it doesn't have a name. Oh. Maybe you guys can help me name it. Ian made it up because he drank all the. I had this nice bubbly wine, and he drank all of it. So I told him he had to make me podcast fuel. So he, um, it's it's ginger juice oh. and from actual chopped up ginger and uh matcha powder and gin and oh, honey that sounds awful oh yeah. it's really good it's really good he was worried it might be awful too but it's really not it's really quite good although i can see some of the matcha powder settling at the bottom that so that's probably gross. not gonna Ugh. have like a beautiful finish to it but um but it's really quite delicious it's very gingery the matcha is kind of understated i like it. it's funny because i like all of those things a lot but together they sound awful. I like so. Should we just call it pond water then? Yeah, I we like pond call water. It, what about matcha man? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good pun. But what about the ginger? It's important. Puts hair on your chest. <laughs> it's a ginger ginger matcha man. It's a redhead. Uh, okay. All right. Redheaded macho man. I really like macho ginger, man. and I like ginger in my mixed drinks, but I hate matcha, and I also hate... You hate um, matcha? I hate matcha. It tastes like fucking dirt. It it's <laughs> delicious. You mean it's earthy. It's earthy. It tastes like... <laughs> it doesn't taste like dirt. dirt. You're right. It doesn't taste like dirt. It tastes like freaking like, pond scum. <laughs> <laughs> and looks like it, too. I know oh, it's healthy. I really like it. I like most things. I'll probably get to like it someday. <laughs> Let's drink. You do some. like most things. I like most always... things. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, who has homework follow up from last week? Mm. Finished Island. And what did you think? It's very good. And are we going to read that listener email? Because we have some will... listener emails. That yes, will, we um, are. I thought address I thought the we'd ending. Do that next. Okay. I also okay. started and finished another book. What the fuck, Ben? Making us look bad. <laughs> I mean, it was a, it was like a, it was a book that has like giant margins, and the text was 
big and it was like pretty short so it was a quick, okay cool it was, very so it was a book for babies one yeah, fish two fish red fish blue fish it was a doctor <laughs> 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 no it was actually another Haruki murakami book oh. I can't which stop one that shit it's called after dark it's really it was really cool um, it's not my obsession this week but i do kind of want to talk about it for a second because like have you ever been walking on the street and you just like pass someone and get that like momentary feeling where you're like they're just a passerby to me but they also like have their whole life and like you know they have they, they have their whole story and everything but in my in this one moment they're just like a person i don't know walking by me you know what i mean there's yeah a, the there's a word for that yeah is sonder it? sonder oh yeah this book is basically like has that whole feeling it's like about oh, a night cool. in tokyo it takes us over just one night in tokyo and like every chapter is like a specific time of the night and you just kind of huh. like watch a few characters do some stuff it's really that cool that sounds really cool it sounds yeah. like right up my alley yeah have you ever been walking down the hall and you feel something fall <laughs> there's a word for that <laughs> What in the world does a diarrhea song have to do with anything? He was like, are you ever walking down the street? And you, which made me feel like it had that cadence to it. (laughs) I'm sorry, Ben. That does sound like right up my alley. The book, not the (laughs) public diarrhea. Uh, Yeah. Well, should I read that email from uh, our listener, Uncle Al? Yep. Our listener email one of one of several. Yes, yeah, we have a few, and some of them are not from my mom, so great. <laughs> <laughs> but we love them all equally. Yes, I I didn't forward you guys the one from my. Uh, it's actually probably better, you, but there's pictures in it, and you're going to want to see them. But so, um, our uncle Al, uh, who just moved to the Amazon, emailed us. Um, he says, "Hey, you three. Nice treatment of Island, one of the ten or so books that I've had that has had the oh my God, I already can't read. Okay. Nice treatment of Island, one of the ten or so books that have had the greatest impact in my thinking, and I hope how I live my life. Glad you liked it so much, Ben. The discouraging message is that if people can develop a utopia, other people will probably destroy it out of envy, ignorance, or just plain old malice. The encouraging message though is that it is possible. So let's go with that. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's really interesting you said that because I like I hadn't gotten to the end of the book uh, when I last when we ha- when we recorded last, but in like in retrospect, it's kind of very telegraphed and like not at all a secret. It's like not a surprise that at the end of the book they kind of get like taken over in the the civilization to some extent. You like mm. it, you don't see it like collapse, but you get the idea that like immediately after the end of the book, it's kind of like gonna go away um Hmm. because like everyone in the book talks about it and talks about and they're they're kind of at peace with it too it's like so but i felt like as i was reading it i really liked that civilization i really liked the people in it so i didn't want to think about the fact that it would happen Mm -hmm. so i but you mentioned it actually yeah i mean like you told us that the guy was there on like a mission yeah well yeah he actually ended up this is spoilers but like he actually ended up not really kind of happened in spite of him i see yeah well now i don't have to read it (laughs) you really do (laughs) (laughs) we must i'll read it i will read it i don't think i had any more homework follow-up i don't well should i read our other two listener emails yeah 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 okay so um the next one was from a listener named molly um Ben, and also others who like dystopian books and or online games and or the future of the internet. Um, Two days ago, I started reading Ready Player One by Ernest Cline, and I am devouring it because it is so dang good. I'm not done yet, but I highly recommend that all of you read it. Also, it's being made into a movie in 2018, so try to read it before that. Okay, bye. Love, Molly. That's my wife. (laughs) That's my wife. I think has read that and has recommended it to me before also. Who's read it? Our dad. Oh, cool. So that's a listener rec for all of our other listeners. Cool, cool, cool. Listener cool slash lady. former guest slash cool lady. Cool lady. I forwarded you guys the one from my mom. Just Should we now? read that one now too? Yes. Just yeah. Now. Oh Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god. So, like childhood nightmares. <laughs> 
So uh, first, this is from Liz slash mom slash Aunt Liz. Uh, first, you haven't really lived until you've listened to your latest podcast with Norbert Brown while you guys are misspeaking about his memories about Broccoli Man. <laughs> 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 He, he muttered quite a bit and says he completely remembers all of it and told you so, but he will not email you. <laughs> <laughs> then, what, then why did he tell you that he didn't remember it? I guess maybe he didn't, or I don't know what happened. I, I was certain that we had talked about it, but he insists that he definitely remembers it. Oh my and, god, Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm glad because it means he's not going senile because like <laughs> clearly it's something he did a lot. So <laughs> like that's good. Um by the way, I'm writing this while listening to your segment emails from my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm sending you a photo of that very scary doll of dad's that you mentioned. His name was Zach the Sack. Hang on, I can't scroll down for some reason. That's not cool. Do you want me to take over? Okay. Okay, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. His name was Zach the Sack. He is completely (laughs) creepy. (laughs) (laughs) And his sister was Hedda Get Better. (laughs) Hedda Get Better. She's yeah. three faces. She really does. She's so creepy. Oh I can describe to you how creepy these dolls is. They have th- she's three faces. Her head swivels <laughs> from sickness to good health, which is that's not creepy at all. Uh, like oh my god, that is sixty degree. So terrible swivel. Also, the, yeah, so- the Zach the Sack doll that our dad had, or maybe still has, that was just sitting Mm-mm. in the garage for the longest time. He doesn't have it. He got rid of it because oh, it creeped us all out God. so much. Because yeah. it, it's all of its facial features were like rubbed out from being so old. Also, so it was like yeah, this it- weird, like empty face. Yeah, and also, okay, I don't know which is worse because I'm looking at this picture now, and Zach the Sack in perfect condition has a really really weird beard yeah what the fuck is that just, just like like really long pubes just coming off yes. the bottom of his pubes chin. is the first word i thought of <laughs> yeah and <laughs> zach the sack that lived in our house he didn't oh have those anymore God. but he did have a hole where they used to be oh my and my God. dad pulled them all out during his clearly traumatizing oh childhood <laughs> all right there's more in this email yeah yeah last but not least I found this while researching Zach the Sack. Betty the Bashful Bride and Zach the Sack side by side. There's a link. It's like a link to these two really creepy toys. One is Zach the Sack with full pubes coming from his face. And then this like really creepy doll. These dolls are so creepy. They're so creepy. They're so creepy. Rare the 60s. Dolls. Toys for children. Makes you think. Clearly helicopter parenting wasn't a thing. Take a look. We should tweet those links. And yeah. one last thing, especially for Aaron and all the others in the Ghosts are It's So Scary Camp. There's a new show coming out on the Sci-Fi Network called Ghost Wars. Science makes killer ghosts. That should be a <laughs> killing thought. Love, Mom. P.S. Norbert recommended the Huxley book Island to Lucas, and Uncle Al recommended it to him. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. Nice how these things travel around families. Yeah. Well, shout out to... Our uncles, Alan Emerson, down there in the Amazon. Mm-hmm. Shout out. Um, it was so lovely to get so many emails this week mm. from family. Were there any more? No, that's all. Three. That's it, yeah. Cool. But it's just nice. As Aaron said earlier this week, our family listeners are the wind beneath our wings, <laughs> although we do welcome any kind of listener as well. It's true. Uh, but them especially the wind yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> you can make a wind noise now that you have your special pop filter <sighs> can you hear it oh wow, it sounds like the wind <laughs> i got a pop she's, filter she's doing Perfect. that earlier she's like you can't hear that and i was like well i can hear it <laughs> I don't know how you can hear it. <laughs> Clearly your pop filter is defective. Give us a good pop. <laughs> Did you hear that? Give us some plosives. Plosives. Buh. Bojangles. What is going on with the Bojangles? It's like you're not even talking. It's beautiful. <laughs> 
Do we have uh, a family inside joke this week? No, I was just thinking I don't have an inside joke or a terminology I prepared. Have, I have a small inside joke that we can possibly tell. It's kind of not a family inside joke, except it is, and now it can be. Okay. Because I don't think Ben knows it. But it was another one from our Savannah trip. We um, saw the sign on the way, I don't know whether it was in Charleston or Savannah, and it was to advertise a restaurant, a seafood restaurant, and the sign just said, Shrimp Happens. (laughs) (laughs) And we were talking about what might happen at that restaurant. (laughs) You're like eating a dish, and it's like not a shrimp dish. But there's like one shrimp, or you're like get to the bottom of your beverage, your iced tea, and there's yeah. like a shrimp, and you're like, excuse me, there's a shrimp in my drink, and the waiter would shrug and be like, shrimp happens, <laughs> <laughs> and also that I know that it's supposed to be shit happens, but also that's not like the correct like grammar, like it would be shrimp happen, happen, <laughs> yeah, yep, it would. Be shrimp happens. Shrimp happens. <laughs> <laughs> so every once in a while, I'll be texting Hannah, and there's like a shrimp emoji, and I'll just include it within the text out of context. And I'll be like, oh, sorry about that. Shrimp happens. <laughs> yeah, and then also, and also, just like from an advertising perspective, as a marketing professional, I don't think you're like doing it right. If you're comparing your food to shit in any context. Wow, that's a great point. <laughs> right. It's and not, what's... It's so bad. And what's the... And even if you're not comparing it to shit, you're comparing it to a disaster. Like, shit happens. <laughs> yeah. like, like, does shit happen after you eat that shrimp at the restaurant? <laughs> Are you walking down the hall? It was just, we, we, I think we drove by. I got it. <laughs> that was a late hitter. So sorry. It, it's just like, we, we must have seen it more than one time because I remember getting like uh, progressively more and more like angry and confused about it throughout the whole week. I was like, but why does shrimp happen? <laughs> why is that billboard like that? But it's. It's effective. Not that I'm ever going to eat there, but we're talking about it now. I don't know. the name of the restaurant. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I thought it was called Shrimp Happened. No, what? no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Are you sure? I'm 98% sure that it wasn't called Shrimp Happened. <laughs> Another thing I remember from the trip, that, from that shrimp. <laughs> 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 Is that a spoon- spoonerism? <laughs> when I was trying to... From that shrimp. <laughs> shrimp. Uh, we I also remember. passed okay. another confusing sign by... Then this is where... Um, Wait, no, guys, it was... It, it was a place... It, it was the restaurant called Shrimp Happens yeah, in I Roswell, Georgia. Yeah, I knew Georgia. it. Yeah, it's yeah. closed now. Apparently. <laughs> oh, well. Who's <laughs> surprised? <laughs> Oh, there's a shrimp happens in Moscow. Yeah. <laughs> what? What's going on wow. here? Well, th- I mean, they get a pass because they're not native English speakers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They do. They do. So oh, it- wow. Before shrimp happens closed, it had a two and a half star review on uh, review average on Yelp. Oh, my yeah. God. That's a shame. Well, shrimp Sorry. happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say, Erin? What was like, the other thing? Uh, the other one was like uh, a place near our friend Sarah's house. It's a dairy place, I guess, like a like a dairy brand, and they have a giant cow like sign, and it's their slogan is in quotes, "Better than it has to be." <laughs> And we're like, how is that a good? What? <laughs> Better than it has to be. Like, like, like uh... legally? <laughs> 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 Maybe. Like, are, am I supposed to like, be like, thank you? Like, Better than it has Above to be. Above the minimum safety requirements. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not to survive? and delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and then during... The hurricane that ripped through there recently, 
Apparently they took the sign down to keep it safe from the hurricane, and Sarah texted me that, and I was like, safer than it has to be. <laughs> <laughs> Should we jump right into Aaron's obsession? Oh, I'm Holy first. shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you okay, Ben? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just excited. I can't see you, so I was like, I assumed it was excitement, but wasn't sure if you had, like, spilled something. <laughs> Okay, my obsession this week is kind of, this leaving space is not necessarily my obsession, but it's our space to talk about Stranger Things. You want to oh. tell them why why you're leaving space instead of having an obsession? Because I'm still on that breast. <laughs> <laughs> Which was an unfortunate typo I made to hand I don't think it was unfortunate at all. I thought it was quite I What I meant to say, I'm still on that bread. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you should give a sourdough update before we oh, talk about Oh, let's do a sourdough things. update. Yeah. Great point. I hope this becomes a segment. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Well, we'll see after tonight. So I spent all day <laughs> working, which is true. Any of my coworkers slash boss who are listening from home, but also making a sourdough dough, which takes for goddamn ever. So, like, last <laughs> night, I made the leaven, which is, so I made, like, over the course of those five days, you made a. I made my culture. Sorry. <laughs> 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 uh, Levin. <laughs> Are we talking about Stranger Things? <laughs> the Levin. <How's> that? <laughs> so, anywho, you know, I, over those five days, as I explained last time. You get, you cultivate the yeast, all these bacteria that makes the sourdough sour grow alongside them, and that takes five days. And I came out with a vat, like four cups of sourdough starter, and use a tablespoon for (laughs) this recipe. So I do all this work, have all this, like, kind of freaky thing that I'm pretty sure has a brain at this point. (laughs) It's very much alive. And... I'm, I mix it with more flour and water. It's kind of inc- it's kind of crazy. Like all the ingredients here are just flour, water, and salt. That's absolutely it. Wow! But it's just like all of the all of these things that you wouldn't eat on their own through fermentation and bacteria and whatever become something that you like crave and want and that can nourish you and and fuel you. It's mm-hmm. ridiculous. So. I had to make that last night, and it had to rise overnight, and then a series of ridiculous things that I had to do this morning <laughs> and throughout the day, because it's very tender, you know, you can't, like, touch it too much, or, like, you know, say anything political about it, or it'll be late. <laughs> like, it's just absolutely tender and delicate. So, anyway... It, and it, it's like, do one thing to it and then let it rest for 30 minutes because it's tired and <laughs> needs to tired. recuperate. <laughs> it's r- ridiculous. It's like hanging out with an old person that needs to take a nap like throughout the day. You can like touch <laughs> an episode you of Jeopardy them. and then you got to take a breather. It's just like that. <laughs> So anyway, tonight after the pod, it's taking a long nap right now, and then it's ready to bake. And it's probably going to be ridiculous and terrible, but, um, you know, it's the first one that I made, so. You have to be an expert by next week, so. Yeah. Hopefully next week will go better. But it might be too much damn work that I might not be up for it. (laughs) 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 I don't think I want to sink an entire day of our time together. Like, if babying a sourdough loaf. If you're not baking a sourdough loaf, (laughs) then you're buying a sourdough loaf. Because I refuse to leave North Carolina without eating sourdough bread. Okay. After all of this discussion about it. I'm acting like we didn't do that this week. We bought a sourdough loaf this week. (laughs) <laughs> we only have them in North Carolina. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll make one. I'll make one this weekend, and I think it'll keep till Tuesday. Or you know, yeah. maybe I'll make one Monday. I have the you know the whole week off next week. You could probably freeze it too. <clears throat> but then why bake fresh bread? <laughs> I don't know. But I was like, I see why people 
have their job as being a baker. That was a weird way to say that sentence. <laughs> I see why people do this at their, as their job. Not because they love it, but because it literally takes all of your time. <laughs> You don't have another option. <laughs> That's probably why. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, okay, so. so Stranger Things. We're about to talk a bunch of spoilers about Stranger Things. Yes. Absolutely. So, 100% spoilers. Okay. Be warned. Stranger Things. We, I don't know about y'all, we rewatched season one before uh, going into season two. I kind of wish I had. Yeah. I forgot some stuff. Yep. I was like, I can't remember if Steve... Is a good guy or a bad guy? Yes, I had that exact same thing I happen. I did not like him last season, but he was dope this season. Yeah! Well, that's because at the end of last season, you started to like him. See, I is forgot that about happened? that entirely. All I remember I from last season is him, yes. like, destroying Jonathan's camera, being a douchebag. Yeah, no, but at, by the end of the season, he, like, bought Jonathan a new camera. Did like, he? Oh and, my god! And was god. sweet. Yeah, y'all should have fucking watched, rewatched season one. It was worth it. And... Did he... <laughs> Go ahead. I have a question about Steve, though. So, when I first saw him on the screen, what I thought was that he pressured the yes. sister into sex. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And then Barb disappeared and died. Yep. While they were doing that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think I was still mad at him about that. Yeah, that I mean, was it wasn't his fault that barb died though it was his fault (laughs) (laughs) i mean like the dem the demogorgon ate her yeah but i feel like that was i don't know yeah but i loved him this season he was great and it was confusing because i Mm -hmm. didn't i didn't take the very wise step of watching season one again so our parents were so confused when we went over to their house after we had finished it. Like they thought that the sheriff was um was uh what's the kid who coughed up the wormy? What's his name? Will. Will. They thought the sheriff was Will's dad. What? Because of that one scene where the doctor calls him dad and they like give each other that look like I'm not his dad. They thought that they thought that he was like in cahoots with the with the people at that facility where that doctor was the like the whole time like they they had made all these wild leaps because they also didn't watch <laughs> the first season. Also, of the they watch. watch like a million shows, so I imagine it's hard to keep track of all of those threads. Re- rewatching was great because a it like whet the appetite for season two, <laughs> and you. You get that immediate, like, at the end of season one, like, your world ends because you don't have any more Stranger Things to watch. Like, yeah. immediate gratification. Yeah. And, uh, and obviously with the refresh of the memory, the only downside, I think, is that season one is better by so much. Like, really? I, enjoyed, I enjoyed season two, but season one is hmm. really much better. Do you um, think it's because... Of that, like, unraveling the central mystery thing that you were talking about last I week? don't think so, because I thought the mysteries in season two were actually very compelling. Mm. I think it, it was just, I just liked it more. And I think if you rewatched it, you would, you would, you would agree with me. I adore, I can't remember any of their names, but I adore um, the, the one who got the teeth this season. Dustin. Dustin. Yeah. I oh like it. Maybe you would know their name if you had... I know Eleven's name. Yeah. Jane. And that oh, one, yeah. Oh, snap. Deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> so, um, was anybody else kind of confused about, like, what the point of her sister was? That whole, that whole episode, episode was, was bullshit. Yeah. It was, like, <laughs> it was literally just to explain why she, like, had enough power slash motivation to, to close the, like, portal at the end. Yeah. Like, Which was a dope scene. That was awesome. And, like, I, and like, I guess if that had just happened and they didn't have any sort of precedent for her having that kind of like power, I would have been like, hey, how did she just randomly be able to do that? But like, I would have believed right. that she was motivated that the, like the whole, all of her friends would have been killed and the whole town would have been like yeah, destroyed. Like that, I felt like that would have been enough for me. Don't you think it was think also they're... so she could get a badass makeover? I think they're gearing well, maybe, up for yeah. season three as well. Like, yeah. like eight is significant, mm. too, because what about, you know, nine and ten? 
Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Um, so I had this weird moment in that episode say. where, like, for most of the episode, I forgot that this ep- that this show was set in the '80s somehow, and I kept thinking, like, God, their hair is all just so over the top. Like, <laughs> that's so unrealistic that they would all dress like that. What is going on? And like, I don't know why I was really fixating on it, and it took me about three quarters of the episode to remember that it was the '80s. <laughs> I had this also this other interesting kind of thing that I noticed. This was kind of the main thing that I was going to talk about if this was my obsession. I ended up with a different obsession. So that's why this is that's why Aaron has done this generous thing of making this time for all of us to discuss. Because I'm on that breast. You're still on that breast. <laughs> um, so um, I was really fascinated with the relationship between Eleven and the sheriff in this season. Mm. And not just, you know, because it was like a cute father-daughter kind of like thing that was unfolding, but also because without the context of the first season and the rest of the show, like if, if the if the show was like it just started at season two and all you saw was Eleven's perspective of it, you could very easily interpret it as like he is some kind of predator. Like he kept her locked up for a a year and Mm -hmm. basically like convinced her that she couldn't leave the house because people were after her and like completely isolated her and set up like traps around her and like conditioned her in ways to like and also kept on promising her that she was going to be able to leave uh soon and never like paying off on that Mm -hmm. and uh it was really interesting because like um it was all extremely justified and he was doing his best and we know that because we were like following the action but like uh you know and we knew about the first season and we knew that like the monsters were real and all that Mm -hmm. stuff but like if you just like think about it out of context i just thought i i don't know that they did this on purpose and i don't know what the message is exactly but it just kept on like occurring to me again and again that Mm -hmm. that like it just it like it could so easily be interpreted that way too from if like from with it without the context that we all have yeah <clears throat> that's an interesting observation i hadn't thought of that yeah i'm pretty sure they didn't do it on purpose something that i kind of was i had a hang up uh, this season a different hang up which was i was convinced that Bob, a.k.a. Samwise Dad Bod, was, <laughs> which I did not intend, I saw that on Twitter, uh, where where you go to find all the humor on the internet. Um, I was convinced that Samwise Dad Bod was working for the, I couldn't quite, especially coming from season one, I couldn't quite grasp the relationship of, like, that hospital they went to, mm-hmm. like, when they were being recorded, I didn't know if they knew that I, you know, it was like, maybe they think they're going to a regular doctor, Yeah, but it's actually part of, you know, this. No, they drove onto the, onto the, like, the campus of the research facility. I know, but I didn't remember that's where it was. It looks different. (laughs) And (laughs) I was probably looking at my phone. I was probably looking at Twitter. (laughs) Um, And so I didn't know, and I was convinced that Bob was just a plant um, and was a spy or something. And the same with the new people, the the guy with the little mustache and and Max, Max's brother mm. and Max, couldn't I still figure don't them quite out. Understand what their whole point was? Yeah, I don't either. Because there was a lot of of like there was a whole subplot that like didn't hap- that didn't do anything. Yeah, like I but liked did- Max. I thought she was a cool character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I and didn't I didn't see her purpose in the story. I didn't see Billy's purpose at all. Yeah, he I mean, either so two dimensionally evil. What's the, well, he wasn't. But they had that scene with his dad where he cried because yeah. he was clearly abused, and that's why he was exactly like, how he was. That's true, but that was like the last episode. Or something. Yeah, and that was kind of, that was almost like the resolution of his subplot. It was like yeah, he's a he's a bad guy, but he's got trouble at home. Like, I mean, so does Max, though. Max yeah. lives there, too. I, I I was in the same boat, Aaron, though. Like, when I thought, when I saw them, and they had, like, just moved there from California, and he was talking all weird about how, like, they're not really siblings, I was like, 
are they some kind of like people with powers? Like, were they at a exactly. research facility or something? Yes, and that's it funny. Turned out I they were on... just step siblings. Yeah, I, I kept on and... wondering where their parents were. Yeah, but I thought something bad had happened. I thought he'd like killed their parents or something. Mm-hmm. I didn't think that they were plants. Well, and he kept being like, "Well, you know, it's your fault that we're here." And then yeah. they like never oh, yeah. ever explain that. Yeah, never ever. <laughs> That was frustrating, yeah. I yeah. hope they I, have some, like, bigger purpose in the next season. Me too. I really, really liked that scene where he shows up and flirts with Max's yeah. mom. Not Max's mm-hmm. mom. Mike, um, Mike's. Mike. Mike's mom. Yeah. That was really, <laughs> like really, really funny. so much, too. So <laughs> yeah. It was so random. <laughs> well, like, they, uh, like, and also, like, the, like, stereotypical, like, candles everywhere bathtub romance yeah, novel right yeah. before that. Like, very good. Very yep. good. Stranger Things. Yep. <laughs> Great job. And Ted, like, sleeping on his armchair. Yep. Yep. Come on, Ted. It's, I do think, I think they do a really good and interesting job with families, usually. Yeah. In the show. I appreciate that a lot. Have we mentioned Another? how Bob, similar Bob's character was to Samwise Gamgee? By the way, <laughs> like, they're almost the same. Yep. <laughs> Except the loyal, same unwavering. Die. Yeah, like extremely loyal, willing to give themselves up to make sure like everyone else can get <laughs> be safe and get through. So so earnest. Yeah. Whoa. Ah, uh, fuck, fuck, fuck. You okay? Yeah, it just won't stop unplugging. There we go. Okay. Well, that seems like Sorry. a lot bigger of a deal. <laughs> Are you still recording? Nope, I'm still recording. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer that question. No. Kylie does Are you that still too. recording? Wait, we've no. talked to, I've talked to Hannah about this before and Kylie, how both of them like default to answering no to almost everything. <laughs> Even when the answer is yes. Do you know what? <laughs> Are you still doing this extremely important thing that you should be doing? Nope. I'm still doing it. <laughs> no, you know, okay, I just did it again. So I had never believed him about that. And then two things happened. The first one was I moved in with another um, youngest child from a different family, my friend Matt, and he pointed it out to me again uh, that I always do it. And then secondly, we started doing this podcast and I noticed it all the time in the first several episodes. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, like, I just say, I just like, I just start sentences with no all the time. <laughs> Do you think it's an oldest child thing? Because Kylie's an oldest too. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. Because it's not like the way, like, sometimes Ian does it, but his are more like, I noticed that too in the Halloween episode, but it was more like. Um, a confidence thing, kind of. It was like, no, just I wanted to say, but like mine are often stated very confidently, mm-hmm. even if there's not much context to them. Yep. <laughs> like, my name is no, my sign is no, my number is no. <laughs> so you'll uh, just start a sentence with no. I didn't notice that. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. I, yep. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. But. <laughs> It's also, like, a thing that's happening with the vernacular, I guess. I've heard A lot of it. no but yeah is what Kylie does. No but yeah but... No, no but, but yeah. yeah. No, no but, but yeah. yeah. No, but... <laughs> no but yeah but... That's, like, your default affirmative. <clears throat> no but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean... No but yeah. It happens. Shrimp happens. <laughs> Shrimp happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had, a, I had another thing I wanted to say about Stranger Things, which is... I am not a fan of 80s mu- music and movies. Like, I, I typically... Um, Holly and I were talking about this. I, I just, like, have the hardest time with um, 80s movies and mm-hmm. 80s music. I find them all to be so cheesy. And something we both really like about Stranger Things is that it's set in the 80s and it's really 80s, but it's not cheesy. It's, yeah. like, mm-hmm. it's to me, it makes the 80s feel really cool. And I, like, have been mm-hmm. enjoying 80s music like specifically 80s music from the stranger theme stranger <laughs> <laughs> theme thing track the stranger things theme soundtrack theme, soundtrack. right the theme tunes <laughs> <laughs> the theme tunes jesus great christ great british show off <laughs> the great stranger british themes theme tracks <laughs> Stranger Things 
Soundtrack. Soundtrack. <laughs> theme tunes. <laughs> theme tunes is what I was thinking. <laughs> From now on, soundtracks are renamed theme tunes <laughs> specifically from from those just like liking those songs and thinking that that era just has a cool feel i'm like steve is so cool and his hair's real neat you know just like, <laughs> just like these 80s things and i'm like okay i'm feeling it you know yeah i i experienced that too i feel i think it's like it's a lot more genuine like i would i wouldn't necessarily know because I only lived for two years in the 80s, but it seems like it's more like actually living in the 80s than, like, writing a movie right. in the 80s. Exactly. Like, know? people were just, like, living their life, you yeah. know? It feels... It's somehow, even though, like, the upside down is not a thing, it feels more relatable. <laughs> this could be you or me being chased by a Demogorgon. Oh, another thing I wanted to say was I called that shit with Dart, Dustin yeah. and oh, Dart. Yeah, I, I, that pissed I, I me off. I called that. I was like, I said to Molly, as soon as Dart escapes forever from Dustin, I said yeah. to Molly, there's going to be a scene where the group of them are together, <laughs> probably in the Upside Down, and they get cornered by a group of Demogorgons, Demodogs, Demodogs. and then Dart is going to like show up, and they're going to have a touching moment, and then yep. he's going to let them pass, which is exactly what happens. Yeah. Did you... Uh... Did you figure out that Dart was, like, related to the Demogorgons right away? From the very beginning. No, not you, Ben. I'm asking Erin, because I don't think that that she saw Dad's Facebook post. I was like, that was the slug that Dustin threw up. Okay. Yeah, what did will, your dad... So, what was... Or Will threw up, sorry. <laughs> um, let me what was see. What was that thing that your dad said that made it you guys like, rage? It was like, he posted something that, uh... He said, my favorite line from Stranger Things so far, how was I supposed to know he was a Demogorgon? Yeah. Oh. Which, by the way, wasn't actually a line in the show ever. It was. It was, was in the it? scene where they, where they were, I don't I remember him holding a shovel and they're on train tracks and he says it. I have a cue. Is the, and I it would be the best person to answer this, so this might be hopeless. Was, were the Demogorgons in Stranger Things 2 the same one as in, as in the first season? No, because they weren't dogs in the first season. I I think if they had continued to grow, they would have grown to like the weird like okay. Size that was what, that they was what kept I kept on thought. saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. So I think they were like juveniles. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Oh, and the crossing water thing, Ian called that, but they didn't. It didn't pay off that well. Like they they don't like water. They mm-hmm. they won't. They don't oh, right. cross water. And like and then before uh, what did you call him? Sam Wise dad bod. dad bod. But before he could tell anybody about that, because he clearly was on to it, because he turned that sprinkler on and turned him away. But before he could tell anybody mm. about that, he died. No, right. What? So I no, think he, they still don't really that know that. No, no. He figured that out when he figured out the map. That's how he, he figured did. out the map. He did. But I don't think anybody else was focusing on that aspect, because mm-hmm. he was the one that thought of turning the sprinklers on later. Yeah, I Yes. I didn't get the sense that anybody else really picked up on it. Yeah, probably not. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, I could, I could be wrong. Somebody else pointed out, I don't remember who it was, and apologies if they're listening and I'm not giving them credit, but that, like, just thinking about possible mysteries set up for season three, um, one of them being that in the Upside Down Tunnel, whatever that was, um both Hopper and Dustin mm-hmm. got sprayed in the face by that mm-hmm. spore stuff. So that's a possibility. And also like that scientist doctor dude got his leg fucked up. So mm-hmm. like that's a potential infection thing. And also I thought it was very ominous at the end scene um, that the, that the monster yeah. was hovered over the school. Like yeah. it was still following Will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I saw, I saw a thing on, I think Twitter. Poor Will. Or maybe Kylie saw it on Tumblr, I don't remember. But it was, um, idea for season three of Stranger Things. Will Byers has a normal day. Fucking give that kid a break. <laughs> for real. He's so, so, He's sweet, so sweet. And his mom is so fragile. And also I love so her. strong. She's so good. Yeah, and she's that, so Winona good. Ryder is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Every time that I hear a mother on a TV show promise their child that they're not gonna let anything happen to them ever again i'm always like don't just don't say that <laughs> like, yeah, I know. you can't, you can't <laughs> promise, that that. promise yeah <laughs> that's just a lost cause yeah i think we've been saying a lot of criticisms but overall i really liked season two 
Yeah, I liked it too. I think we Absolutely. expressed that we liked it. <laughs> yeah. Shit, we've been talking about this for a long time. We should probably move to obsession number two. <laughs> yep. Okay. Which is Ben. Good, good segment. Great segment, Aaron. <laughs> Well, it wasn't my segment. It was really just an opportunity for us to talk about. Great segment, everybody. Great job. Mine, honestly, isn't really an obsession either. As Hannah mentioned, we have to bend the the rule of excited to expand it to meaning... um, (laughs) Impassioned. Impassioned or angry. (laughs) Because... So... Rule. The only rule is you have to be angry about what you're talking about. (laughs) So, as everyone probably knows, last Thursday... The New York Times published an article about um, allegations against Louis C.K. from four different women about uh, sexual assault. And I'm not going to talk about the details of it because it's gross. Um, And then the next day, Louis C.K. admitted to it, also in a statement to the New York Times. Mm -hmm. And this is like, this is the most recent in a long, in a, a, a long and seemingly endless string of famous and powerful men, uh, being outed as sexual predators, basically. Actually, the most recent is Al Franken that happened today. Um, and with like, with all of this happening, I've just been really angry about it. So I started I was on the T on the way to school one day and I just wanted to get a bunch of thoughts out of my head. So I started writing them down in like a note on my phone and mm. I'm just kind of r- going to run through them right now. And that's going to be my obsession. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Um, I'm going to be snapping in the back. <laughs> so my first thing that I have a problem with is the expression boys will be boys and the whole culture around it, mm-hmm. because I think it, it, perpetuates this myth that men are like sex crazed animals who who have no control over their bodies Mm -hmm. and it's like while it's true that to some extent i don't know how true it is honestly i don't think it's that true that like testosterone maybe well especially boys are in puberty like gives them more urges or something like it it people can learn to control themselves and should be taught to control themselves rather than our society constantly teaching men that they should be acting on all of their aggression. Yeah. Like saying man up and you know you're you need to be a man and, and like fight that kid. Like that's all we're we're constantly showing boys from a very young age that they should not even make an attempt at controlling themselves. So that's why we're ending up with so many people that don't know how to basically. And uh, I mentioned Louis C.K. wrote an apology. It was fucking awful. It didn't mm-hmm. apologize for anything. No, um, he didn't even say I'm for sorry. For one, it had the tone. Once. Yeah, I don't, it wasn't really. I don't. I, I don't want to call it an apology. It had this whole tone. I think he explicitly said it at one point of not knowing that what he did was wrong until now, and it's yeah. like that was just this utter bullshit because he's been it's it brought up to him before and he has denied it. Yeah. Before. Why would you deny it if you thought if you didn't know it was wrong? Also, uh, Paul F. Tompkins, I think, tweeted uh, something like the, the day the apology was released, and said like, "I wasn't aware of how my actions were affecting other people emotionally, and so they tar- started affecting me financially." <laughs> it's like that's actually what's happening here. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. He also, I think, in four different times in the letter, talked about how the female comedians he assaulted admired him. Mm-hmm. And he apologized. In one of the um, phone calls uh, from a few years ago, he reportedly apologized for misreading people. And it's like that—that's honestly even worse because, like, he didn't misread anything. He he ascribed attentions onto the, intentions onto these people to justify his own actions and urges. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't. He, he he was he was writing his own fucking story. He wasn't reading whatever they were putting out. You know. Yeah, and yep. the reason he like has this already foregone conclusion in his head that he can assault them is because, in my view, in a large part, is because of our boysly boys culture, which is basically rape culture. So it's like I can't control it anyway. You know, it's uh, I hate it so much. Like everyone, everyone can control themselves. Yeah. Everyone can. And I actually a while ago, um, Kylie's mom and i argued about this 
to, for like a while because mm-hmm. she was like giving Kylie's sister some trouble for wearing shorts that she thought were too short. And she like said to me to try and like get me as backup when you have a daughter like are you going to let her wear really <laughs> short shorts and I was and my response was if I have a daughter she can wear whatever she wants. Mm-hmm. And we got in this big long <laughs> thing about like how if I if I have a daughter and I tell her that she can't wear like short shorts or short skirts or whatever I'm like I'm basically limiting what she can do. It's it's it's, ugh. it's like instead, if I have a son, I'm going to teach him to not attack women who are wearing short shorts. I'm not yeah. going to tell my girl to not wear short shorts. You know, like right. I I I, I my, don't want to limit people just because other people are shitty. Mm-hmm. My best friend and I were talking about how it's remarkably easy not to sexually assault or harass anybody, yeah. and that we do it every day. Yes, and like, yes. I'm like, I'm like third, almost thirty years clean, <laughs> like thirty years sexual assault and harassment free, like as far as like me yes. assaulting or harassing somebody. Right. Yes, it's very <laughs> fucking easy. We're like, we've been texting each other like, oh, what's up to? Oh, just like. You know, cooking an egg and not harassing anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting ready for bed, not sexually assaulting anybody. I can't imagine how badly you have to be misreading a situation to not be able to see it on someone's face. He was not misreading it. Yeah, he's no, not that's misreading absolutely, it. Absolutely, he, he, that's absolutely not bullshit. misreading it at all. No, yeah, being a, being a sh- choosing. Knowing, knowing, and choosing. Well, and, the, and like, especially with him, like, he, like, he's clearly got some, some nuanced, like, thoughts and perspectives on a lot of things because he expresses them in his comedy, at least an awareness of them. Mm-hmm. So in those moments, he very definitely was choosing to ignore all the things that he knew to be true about these power dynamics and all this stuff. Yeah. Like, it, Yeah. This is also why it kills me daily that He Who Shall Not Be Named was elected president Mm -hmm. after the Access Hollywood tape. And the way he got away with it was saying it was locker room talk. Yeah. And I have two really big issues with that. Number one is the issue that a lot of people in the media focus on, which I think is the lesser of the two, which is that, like, a lot of people, you know, you hear a lot of other men say, like, I've been in a lot of locker rooms. I've never heard that before. Mm -hmm. Like. And that's true. Like, I, I played baseball in high, uh, all four years of high school. Uh, sports teams, in the, like, in these weird, like, hyper-masculine situations, men say a lot of shitty things about women. And But honestly, I never heard anything that bad. Mm-hmm. And also, in retrospect, I should have spoken up more about it. And I never participated in it myself because I didn't want to do that because it's awful. Um, and uh, number two is that even if... Like, that does happen in locker rooms. That's not okay. Like, Mm -hmm. that shouldn't be an excuse to do it. That's, like, we shouldn't be talking about anyone like that. Whether they're there or not. Whether it's in a locker room or whether it's, like, to their face. Like, that's incredibly disrespectful. And it's just, like, treating them like literal objects. He says in the fucking, in the tape, when you're famous, they let you do anything. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's literally, like, Harvey Weinstein's fucking mindset when he's assaulting women is that like i'm famous and powerful i can i can they, i can give them something for them giving me something and i want sex from them mm-hmm, like that's right. literally he literally is in the same exact mindset as harvey weinstein and they're, he, they're it's on tape talking about it and uh-huh. he still got elected president it's insane to me i don't and fucking that, get it and that our culture is is that that so that they can get away with it like yeah, you know, exactly. All of, all of the things. I mean, there are older. I mean, there's a, there's an accusation against um, Neil deGrasse Tyson from a woman who claimed that she, you know, was drugged and raped by him, and really? that's I didn't know a that. really old. Yeah, I came across an article of like, you know, all of these ones are popular now, but there's a whole host of ones mm-hmm. from a ton of J- J- uh, Jared Leto, Leto, whatever the fuck mm-hmm. his name is, mm-hmm. is accused multiple, multiple, multiple women. Under some underage of being sexually assaulted, like it's just like the list goes on and on, and that it's getting traction now is great, but it's also like it's so rampant because 
it's not only like they think they can get away with it, they can. Yeah. Yep. They know they can get away with it. They know they can get it's, away it's with at it. The, it gets to the point sometimes where, like, as a man, I feel like I'm unusual for not immediately wanting to have sex with every woman I see. <laughs> and it's like, I don't think I am. I think it's just we hear, <laughs> like, we hear more about the, the shitty ones that do. Or at least I hope I'm not unusual in that way. Maybe I am. You might be. I, you might be. I really hope I'm not, because if I am, that's You're just like... living your life not sexually harassing anybody. <laughs> And honestly, if I am, I feel like we need to stop talking about it. Not not us here, but like as a culture, we need to stop talking about it as if the reason for that is something natural. Yeah, you know what right. I mean. Like testosterone exactly. alone can't make a Harvey Weinstein or a Louis C.K. or right. a fucking all the others and Al Franken. Testosterone it's... does not make you a shitty person. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. What do you guys think about the idea of? I mean, I, I, for me, with this, as with so many other things, I feel like a big part of the potential solution is in education. But what mm-hmm. about sort of re-education? Like, could someone be a harasser or a, an excuser of a harasser who then gets, like, you know, a, a, a serious, like, education about what that means, like, kind of similar to... Um, when people go to like alcohol education in college or whatever, like I had to do that and could they come out the other, other side and be forgiven? Because I've seen that really not work out before, but I struggle with that in, um, as it, as it relates to, um, my sort of perspective on the world as a humanist and feeling like for most things that don't come down to like a chemical imbalance in the brain that people can like learn and change and redeem themselves. But it's, I've seen that not work out, especially for sexual harassment and abuse so many times in, like, you know. I think it, while it might be possible, it's not something, like, I, as a human being, will ever trust. Yeah. You know? I, I don't think those people are trustworthy. And it's, like, as a, like, entertainer, like, if Louis C.K. were to be like, oh, I've, you know, years from now, I've learned the error of my ways, blah, blah, blah. Like, I... I can't trust that because the whole, you know, your whole thing was that you were able to do this in secrecy because of your power and now people are looking at you. And so it's not like, like maybe you're not doing it anymore because you don't want to, or maybe you're not doing it anymore because you can't. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know. Exactly. He knew it was wrong the whole time. He knew it was wrong the whole time. Exactly. And, like, that, and that's what we're, we'd be trying to teach them, right? Is like Exactly. There are consequences. No, I, I, I think what we'd be trying to teach them is that is that this is just an inherently morally wrong thing to do. Yeah. And I think it's you, something they already know, but they're still acting on. I don't really know if you can teach that away. You don't you don't not know that it's wrong if you're using your power in a in a way that allows you to do it. You're you're manipulating people. Yep. In, and if you didn't know that it was wrong, you wouldn't be doing that. Also, just... that, that reminds me. The fact that um, like Harvey Weinstein and now Kevin Spacey also have like gone to treatment for this, mm-hmm. we need to stop doing that too, because it's not a fucking disease of an individual. It's a, like a cultural disease. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, like that, that gives them an excuse, saying like, oh, I was... I, I don't know, like I was a sex addict or something. Like I know sex addiction is actually a real thing, but that's not what harvey weinstein's right a case was you know like that's we're 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 giving him an excuse i know that it's it's not really by like buying in for anyone i hope but like well kevin spacey's was the worst the worst apology of all of them it was not even close oh my god yeah that was awful just like let me try to distract you with me coming out as gay let me perpetuate the myth that gay men prey on younger men. Yeah. Like, you are not gay. I am gay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my third Little Britain reference. <laughs> totally natural. I'm the only gay in the village. Uh, that might be my fourth. Yeah, that was... Yeah. Uh, he is <laughs> the worst. And and I also think, like, even though all of his allegations are against... Or, or for harassing men, I think it's it's the same... It's essentially like the same issue, and I think, like, yeah. feminism is kind of the answer to both of them, even though there's no women involved in that. 
case. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yep. And also, I have, I have two side notes kind of related to that. I, I, if you, like, go to any post on Twitter, like, here's an example of um, Rhea Butcher, right after the Louis C.K. article came out, she posted a tweet that said, um, Louis is the show, Louis C.K. is the monster. Mm. And then she said, this has been my draft for, like, a year and a half. Mm. And someone under that immediately, and you find these fucking people everywhere, said, if you knew, why didn't you say something sooner? <laughs> it's like, fuck you people. Especially the people that say that to the women who were assaulted. Because, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. it's traumatizing, number one, to mm-hmm. revisit that. Because mm-hmm. it's an awful experience. And number two, it's, like, dangerous. Mm-hmm. Not oh, for their careers, but in some cases for actual safety. Weinstein literally hired ex Mossad agents to try and silence women and reporters. Mm. Like, it's, it was li- literally dangerous for them to come forward, and they still did. We should yeah. be applauding them. We shouldn't be, like, giving them any shit for not coming forward sooner. That, that's, like, it's not even a pet peeve. That's the, such a, that's a light word for it. It's just, like, yeah. <laughs> I fucking hate that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Also, I hate the, uh, the trope you see a lot of, like, when people say, like, as a father of two daughters mm. and, and, like, yeah. as Ugh. the husband of a wife, this, like, is deeply unsettling to me it's like as a as a human being it should be you should be like it should be super unsettling to you it should rock you to the core that 50 percent of the population cannot feel safe walking down a city street at night like that's fucked up mm-hmm. it's really fucked as a up. human being that's fucked up it's not like you shouldn't have to think of your daughter in that situation to for that to like really really upset you mm-hmm. it didn't occur to me that women were people <laughs> until i had a yeah. daughter <laughs> like, god yeah it's dawning on me now it's like i i don't understand not liking feminism or feminists because like it's it's literally just the belief that men and women are equal mm-hmm. it's like that's that's what feminism is and it's like it's not anti-man it's it's just pro women. Like, why do those have to be mutually? Why do those have to be? Why can't those exist at the same time? I mean, because I'm sorry. All lives matter, yeah. Ben. <laughs> Ugh. I can't started on that. God. Did you see? There's a there's a, a fuck. I can't remember her name. There's a comedian who, uh, when All Lives Matter was like real popular, she was like, All Lives Matter feels like someone came to a funeral and was like. It's my birthday. Can we not? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it just baffles me that we have to like fight daily for the fact that women are equal to men. It baffles me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, we'll That's say, a long, long way to go. Yeah. One yeah. nice thing about all of this has been, uh, for one, people have been promoting a lot of um, female comedians because, like, I think I saw something Aaron Rutuda that was like. Stop! Why stop? Like mourning Louis C.K.'s comedy and start celebrating all these women. Mourning the women's comedy who didn't like get to come to the limelight because they were traumatized for years or kept down in the industry because of this. Like, yeah, that's over 140 tweets. But yeah, it was something. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) it's like stop being upset about the men you lost and start being upset about the women that you never got to see because of what they did. You know. I was called out on a tweet, um, you know, I was, I hadn't said it to anybody, but I was thinking that, honestly, Louis C.K.'s comedy has been making me uncomfortable for a long time, because some of his stand-up is just kind of a little, you know, he talks about his, like, daughters in a weird way, sometimes just in a way that I didn't like, and so I stopped Mm -hmm. listening to him, Mm -hmm. and was feeling kind of smug about that, Um, and then somebody, I saw a tweet from somebody that was like, and for everybody who's been saying, well, I didn't like their art or whatever, you know, stop that bullshit and start thinking about, like, when it happens, when you find out a celebrity that you love. Yeah. You know. And I thought about that. I was like, the only one who could break my heart is Lin-Manuel Miranda. Yeah. Like, truly, <laughs> yeah. everybody, I'm like, Al Franken? Of course. Like, sure. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. everybody, you know, I don't think I could be shocked at this point. By a male celebrity, and I say that honest to God, except for Lynn. Lynn Manuel Miranda. <laughs> I think you're right. I think about it all the time now. Every time I'm listening, yeah. I think about it with the McElroys, I would be devastated. Every time that I find myself thinking, like, oh my God, what a, what a 
not even just a talented like male public figure mm-hmm. but like a, what a sweet nice person they seem like the, my yeah. second thought is like god i hope that that they're yeah. actually that way and not you know yeah. taking well, advantage of that somewhere kind of on that same note and to, to maybe to maybe end this scatterbrained feminist rant on a <laughs> more positive note um it it has kind of a nice kind of nice thing to come out of this has been like people telling stories of men that I respect who were actually good bosses, especially, like, for uh, female comedians working under them. Like, apparently Scott Ackerman, when uh, working on Comedy Bang Bang, had a lot of female writers who really enjoyed working under him. He was also a producer on Take My Wife and, mm-hmm. like, helped Rhea Butcher and Cameron Esposito cool. mm-hmm. make that show happen. Um, and apparently Patton Oswalt is also, like, a delight. Because yeah. like, some woman told me a story, or not told, didn't tell me a story. I saw her story <laughs> on Twitter about how, like... <laughs> Ben, do you think everybody on Twitter is tweeting directly to you? I have some really sad news for you today. She was telling me a story about how she was <laughs> she was playing at a comedy club like the same time as Pat and Oswald, and then like they happened to play the next night at a different comedy club together, and he like came up to her and told her how she, he liked her routine and cited like specific jokes that he felt were good and then like that they just had a nice conversation there was nothing sexual about it yeah that's Which great was, like, <laughs> it was just <laughs> just having a conversation with a perfect stranger and not sexually harassing i know them. it's amazing like i do like i do <laughs> yeah well yeah. you know what that is true and 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 i do i i have also had that thought about people in my like males in my daily life like um it, it, at work and stuff like i'm i'm really glad that i really feel like i can trust this person and he's never let me down in that way mm-hmm. you know yeah. like if you end up working really late with somebody and you know they happen to be like a man you know to you know and it's like it, but i shouldn't have to feel that way i shouldn't have to be pleasantly surprised that yeah, i was right. just treated with basic human respect yeah yeah like yep. and and honestly sometimes i don't even think about it like so honestly i feel like a lot of my interactions with with people, especially at work, like I don't think about gender in that way, you know. Mm-hmm. It, like I like it doesn't occur to me. I'm like, yeah, these are good humans, and they're not like they're not good men. Mm-hmm. They are good men, but they're just they're good humans, mm-hmm. and you know, yeah. I feel comfortable with them. I feel safe with them. So like for me, this whole you know swell that's happening right now, you know, you see a lot of really you know sharp tongued tweets that are kind of aimed at men maybe a little bit, but to me that, you know, I I am certainly not anti-men. In fact, like I don't even, it doesn't even occur to me when I'm interacting with a lot of, because I'm, I'm lucky to, you know, interact with a lot of great dudes in my life, Mm -hmm. but I don't think about it like that. Right. Right. I'm Mm -hmm. like, this is another great person. Yeah. 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 I think too, one thing I wanted to say was in, on the theme of not harassing anybody is as an out gay woman, I am also, it's on my radar as well, you know, as it might be for a man to, you know, to be extra careful when I'm interacting with women to make sure that I'm not doing anything with that would make them feel like I was hitting on them at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I'm like super duper careful to, to make it, you know, to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It just seems like an obvious thing to do. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy. Seems so easy. It's so easy. It is so easy. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's the moral of this whole segment. Just kill. It's or like, just killing it. It's like actually great easier. Great segment, Ben. So I do want to. <laughs> There's like less logistics. <laughs> yeah, <I know>. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Just don't be a piece of shit, yeah. and you don't have to worry about. You don't us have to like. Yeah. You, you don't have to hide in the shadows. There's no timing things right. or anything. Yeah. It's just like all the time. You don't time, have to hire hitmen. Just at all times, just be a decent human. And then that's easy. Yeah. And then you're done. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're done. Set right. it, set it and forget it. <laughs> I hope the swell continues. Let, let's end with, with on a note of hope. Like I, I yeah. do hope that like, that, that like if there, are, you know, if there are, you know, a lot of young people coming up in this kind of moment in culture that they, that they, internalize the message that you should be a decent human and oh that at the me. very worst that that you could get caught if you're not yeah i have a i have a quick question about this this thing i talk to my friends about it's it's two-parter number one do you think that if harvey weinstein and all of these others had happened like exactly a year ago that donald trump would have gotten elected 
Number two, do you think this is all happening in part because Donald Trump got elected? No to the first one, because we're seeing a lot of Republicans who are making up all sorts of excuses for Roy Moore mm-hmm. uh, and not and flat out not caring that he's a he's a pedophile. So then, yes, you do think that he would have still been elected. Oh, sorry. Was that the question? Yeah. Do you think he would? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I still think he would have been elected. Yeah. Um, because that news broke, like, right before the election. Yeah. Um, last year. Uh, and the second question was, do I think this is happening? Um, maybe. Maybe we're just, like, done. Yeah, I think maybe. I I think think it was kind of a last straw for, like, a lot of sexual assault victims was to see this happen. I have, exactly, I have the same thoughts. I, I, I don't think, I don't think that the people who voted for Donald Trump have been moved sure. by much of this even up until mm-hmm. today. Um, any of these news Apologists. in the last yeah, exactly. But uh, but I do think yeah, I do think that it's it's happening partly because of him. In the same way that the whole concept of the resistance in general is is really because of him. I mean, yeah. I don't think Virginia would have happened that way if not for him. Yeah. Yeah. Because of him. <laughs> That's the second episode in a row that we've sung that song. <laughs> ben sang it last time. When, and when I got to that, when I was listening to the snack last week, and I, we got to that part where Ben like sings it for like a bit, like in the background, and I just died. <laughs> he, like, keep go- he like keeps going like softly. I don't know. I didn't even hear that. I, hear I that. forgot I did that too. <laughs> Okay. Are you guys ready for a drastic shift in tone? Yes. yes. I need it. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Yes. Okay, but Erin, I want to know. So that earlier a this week. shift in tone. Yeah. Right. Earlier this week, um, I I revealed to Erin and Ben that I wanted to change my topic from Stranger Things. I did not tell them what I wanted to change my topic to, um, but I dropped maybe a subtle hint, and Erin thinks she knows what it is. So... Well, it it was maybe you dropped a subtle hint today. Did you drop a subtle hint? Maybe. So you said you were revisiting something. Was it something from long ago? Uh, just tell me what you think it is. Well, no, you tell me what it is. <laughs> it's probably it's probably not. It's just like I was revisiting something from my past, and I was like had this overwhelming feeling. That you could potentially be talking about the same thing this week, but it's probably not it. I don't think it is it, because I don't okay. think that you have much experience with this thing. Okay. Well, it's probably not it, so you go. Okay. You also let me know about that after I say. Well, I'll let you know as soon as Are we going to hear thing. what it is? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's how you know. When you reveal it, I'll be like, <laughs> it's the same thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. It's my cat from hell. Okay. No, <laughs> what? I thought you were going to get into Homestar Runner. Oh, no. Oh, oh, wow. That's We should talk about that maybe as an update. They have a new, they have a new, they have a new, they're, they're producing new shit. What? Yeah. That's awesome. They have a whole YouTube channel. Cool. Um, We've watched a couple of new newer things, but I, I didn't know they were producing new shit consistently. So that's exciting. It was like two weeks ago. You are. Because in your chat you were like, nine PM is good. Oh. And I was like, Is it so good? <laughs> I did recognize that you were doing a Teen Girl Squad reference. But I was just... <laughs> Um but no, I need to talk about my cat from hell because I've been watching it okay. a lot lately. Sorry. Sorry. We can talk about Homestar Runner. Just uh, no, no, no. That's going to be a different week. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, um, for anybody who may not know, a couple of years ago, no, it was like three, four, four or five years ago. Now, Ian and I moved in together for the first time in this like small apartment, although not as small as this house actually. And um, our we both had cats, and when we moved in together. We both had a cat. Um, 
so when we moved in together, our cats did not get along at all. He moved into my apartment where um, my then kitten, Handsome Jack, was already established. But as soon as he and his cat Squeaks moved in, or Danny Rustman, as she's now known, um, (laughs) uh, she took over. And he was, he's such a sweet, sweet, soft boy. And he was not prepared for this strong, independent woman to come up into his shit. And he was like, so scared all the time. And she, if she got a beat on him, would like, you know, chase him down and kind of try to hurt him. And for a while it was really bad. And Ian was not being that helpful because it's like, you, you're you more apt to kind of look away from it if your cat is the one that's kind of winning. Mm-hmm. Um, and so um, I started at that time for the first time watching a lot of My Cat from Hell because it's one of the only like cat behavior shows on TV. And um, in the process, I really fell in love with it. And it also super helped us. Like we, we used a lot of tactics from the show to, to like reintroduce the cats and now they're like totally fine with each other like ever since like maybe two weeks after we started like doing some you know site swapping and things um so I, does it involve yelling out a Roomba no no nothing too interesting <laughs> except I did buy this like plant essence stuff that um Jackson Galaxy was hawking oh the guy the host from my cat from hell his name's Jackson Galaxy he has the wildest facial hair you've ever seen he he <laughs> more wild he's than that weird doll yeah yeah he's got like the like three different like segments across his cheeks like just google him you should just google him right now if if either okay. of you haven't seen him before his real name is richard kirchner oh that's terrible i would have changed my name to jackson <laughs> galaxy oh. too kirchner 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 still bad though that's a lot of facial yeah. hair. Yeah, it's a lot of facial hair. He's really I know. he he walks around everywhere with a um with a a guitar case that's filled with cat toys and treats. Um oh. <laughs> Yeah. And and he's but he is like honestly such a sweet person. He is so 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 good with like not just the cats but with like the people because mm. here's the thing about cats. And I and I want to get this out there because I grew up with cats. Like I, I have never no, I have never realized how like unintuitive they are to a lot of people who didn't grow up with them. Like because Ben and I both grew up with like four or five cats in our house all the time. So, um, so like I've always been, I've always been super fascinated by like the, the uh, like all the like fun facts about about cats and stuff. But also like I just kind of generally knew like how to interact with them. But, like, there is a lot about cat behavior that I've learned from watching this show that is, like, very different from the way that humans act because – and dogs, actually. Because, like, on just a very basic level, humans and dogs both, like, started out and continue to be basically pack animals. They're, like, Mm. social creatures by nature. They – Um, they like, they, they, their bodies have evolved to be like really able to express themselves easily. Like dogs and humans both have very expressive faces. You can see when a dog is happy and when it's sad and when it's worried and stuff. And that's, and so Mm -hmm. it's like a lot easier to relate to a dog. Mm. Cats are not in the wild social creatures beyond like their, their like basic family unit. So that's why you have to spend so much more time and energy when you bring multiple cats into a house at different times. That's why you have to spend a lot of, um, you have to like introduce them to each other very slowly or things can go really wrong. Um, It's also why a lot of people just don't treat them, just don't know how to treat them in in a way that helps them to thrive. So like a lot of times when, Jackson Galaxy goes and visits people whose cats are acting out or being really aggressive or whatever. It's because they bought a cat as like an accessory to their household and they Mm -hmm. didn't think anything about like what the cat actually needs to be living a happy life essentially. And then Uh. cats when they play cats when they need to get energy out they play but playing for a cat looks exactly like hunting so people think that they're being like acted out upon aggressively when really this cat just has all this pent-up energy and has no toys because people don't want their they don't know they don't know what their cat needs and they don't want their house to look like 
a crazy cat lady house or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, like, Jackson goes into people's houses in this show. I'm, like, jumping back and forth between my experience and Jackson's oh. experience, and I apologize. But <laughs> Jackson goes into people's houses and, like, meets them, talks to them about their cats, and then meets their cats and observes, what, like, how their cats are acting. He reads bo- their body language really well. He, like, reads the environment. He gives people homework, and then he comes back and, and, like, looks at, like, video homework and tells them, like, what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong and, like, all this stuff. And and it's, like, amazing the changes that happen in these animals over the course of probably, like, a few weeks. Um, He does, like, it's just, like, a cat that was living in a closet that I was, when I was watching today, just, like, living in a person's closet. Like, they wouldn't even come out to use the litter box because they were so scared all the time. And by the time that he was done with them, this cat was, like, um, just, like, coming out and hanging out in the living room with them. And, like, um, and and it's, like, people think of cats as, like, these enigmas. And they're really, really, they're really, really not. It's just, they're just not quite as intuitive as dogs are mm. uh, to to the human brain, basically. But, like, they are actually very predictable a lot of the time. And they really just want to like feel like they have as much of a right to be in your home and your space as you do. That's really all they want. And then also love, but not too much love. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I I remember I you know, my first cat interaction was at your house in Florida mm-hmm. and I at that time didn't like cats cuz I had like come upon a cat on a trail and tried to pet it, and it scratched me, and I was like, well, fuck you. <laughs> like, it, like, looked like it was having a good time, and then it wasn't, and so, yeah. um, and, and, but then I met all your cats, and I was like, oh, cats can be great, and I, I think I've slowly grown to like them more over my lifetime, but I totally agree with you that they're not intuitive at all to me. <laughs> yeah. Just is, not in any way. <laughs> it is interesting to watch, like, people who have only really interacted with dogs yeah. like when kylie's family came over and her siblings like started petting como and like i don't know it's it's interesting trying to watch them like play with him and pet him because it's just like they're kind of trying to do it like you with a dog <laughs> meanwhile just, like, i have the opposite problem like i pet dogs like cats like i like try to like <laughs> scr- i scratch the wrong places on <laughs> dogs we've had we had a dog for years i know <laughs> i don't know I love cats. I think they get a really bad rap. Me too. And also, every study you ever read about them, it makes me scoff and laugh so much. I want to start a podcast just about those dumb studies because, like, especially when it's like cats don't that cats can't feel love about people because this stranger walked up to this cat, the all these cats, and they didn't like him at all. And it's like, well, yeah, like you fucking pulled this cat out of its safe haven place. You introduced it to someone it had never met before. Like, they, it was in its secret place, and you were just like... <laughs> <laughs> I also... Did you see that thing that, like, a dog will wait until it's... If you die in your house, a dog will wait until it's, like, starving to death to eat you, but a cat will, like, wait till it's hungry. I don't know if that's... I don't believe that. Official. I don't believe it. There was also a thing about, like, if you, like, hide a treat and different animals will try to figure it out themselves and i think a dog will like look to you uh-huh. for help first but that's just totally a domestication yeah. thing that just goes back to your point of like dogs need yeah. us and yeah. cats are like i'm good yeah. and yeah, that's just like, fine. my <laughs> favorite thing about cats although it's kind of funny i ended up with jack who basically follows me around like a puppy but like but um i, I mean i like dogs i'm not anti dogs at all but like the whole thing where they're just like always needing your attention it does wear on me and cats are so not like that and i also i think you i've definitely both of you heard me say this before but the fact that you have to earn a cat's trust and kind of like respect for me is a positive that's something that i like about them i like people Mm -hmm. that are like that too as long as the parameters are reasonable (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Like let let them sniff your hand before you go in to pet them. Like that's reasonable for a cat. Yeah. For a human, that's a that's a weird situation. <laughs> Why are you petting a human? Right. First of all? <laughs> let, me, no, <laughs> let me smell your hand. <laughs> Why are you petting me? What'd you have for lunch? But yeah, I, when I 
first started working from home one day a week, <laughs> I would be sitting and, like, looking at my computer, and Henry would stand in front of me and whine. <laughs> because he was like, you're home, we should be doing something. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a lot. <laughs> it is a, it's a lot, but that's what I like. You know, he sleeps under the covers as a spoon. That, but that's like it's like an extreme, right? Like, like I have an mm. extreme, extremely like close together dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also I have a snuggly cat, Same. yeah, and and that is great. That's pretty much the greatest. Like he he will so every night he sleeps between my knees. That's how I know mm. that I'm that I'm okay to go to sleep. He'll wait for me to settle. Aww. I don't know. I do the same thing. I don't know where he waits, but he waits Aww. until I've like stopped <laughs> moving, and then he just hops. He up. waits in a secret yeah. place, and then, and then he just hops up and like, and like makes a little circle down by between my knees and goes to sleep. And he's still there in the morning. And that and oh, like wow. yeah, and we have the exact same routine because I've come out as a stale night. Do you if you're just like laying on the bed at any time of day, does he come up and spoon with you? Because Jack does that Sometimes. too. Sometimes he he likes to sleep on me when I'm on the couch, sitting on the couch. That's his that's his ideal. But like I that's I so guess nice. like the other thing is I feel like people talk about cats like they don't feel the same kind of love for their guardians, and I don't believe that. And I don't think it's wishful thinking that I don't believe that because of all the stuff I just said. And like, also, if you know how to read a cat, then you know how they show affection uh, beyond just like nuzzling and stuff. I mean, nuzzling is like marking you with your scent. It is affection. It's also like, I own you. (laughs) It's like both of those things at once. (laughs) But but like um, the squinty, when a cat like squints at you, that's like, hey, we're friends. Like... uh, that's and so, like, you can you can see it, whether cat likes you or not. And then they just it's choosing to spend time around you. Like, it feels just like such a nice treat. And I just like it. I've met some really rad cats. I used to pet sit for this cat. You met Black yeah. Kitty, um, who who died a couple of years ago. But he would say his he would he would meow. He wouldn't say his name. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really That's creepy. pretty rad. <laughs> he would say his own name. <laughs> <laughs> no, he would. Uh, every time he said his name, he would meow. So I called him Black Kitty Meow because you'd be like, "Hey, Black Kitty," and he'd be like, "Meow!" Like every Kenny time you said too. his name, I love it. I, well, I loved it. He's dead now. Can I ask you um, a question? Uh huh. Right, is Jack as affectionate with Ian as he is with you? I would say overall, our cats still favor the person that they started with. Like, because so, I ask because Kylie's been a little upset lately because uh, Como only sleeps on me. Oh, and like never sleeps on her. That is not a thing in our house because Ian doesn't let the cat sleep on him, which is what the worst. I don't. I, I'm always like, I don't understand you. Like Squeaks will Squeaks will like patiently sit next to him and wait for him to wake up in the morning because she knows that Aww. like he's the one that feeds That's him so in the morning cute. but she knows that she can't get on him because he'll just like push her off but, wow Aww. yeah i don't get it i don't get it either but henry only sleeps on my side of the bed because i'm the only one who will wake up in the middle of the night and let him get under the covers. <laughs> <laughs> he'll like press his cold face on my face in the middle of the night to wake me up to put him under the covers. Honestly, That's probably so all it means, Ben, is that you're warmer. That's what I said. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I thought that's exactly what it was. Yeah. Is that I just have a warm... Because I'm always, like, super warm. Mm-hmm. And I, have a I would lap. sleep on you over Kylie. Thank if you I were so a cold much. Cat. That means so much to me. I would just curl right up on top of you. <laughs> that's beautiful. No question. But no offense to Kylie, either. Yeah. I look at you, Ben, and I'm like, that's the hot spot. <laughs> That's what I've been saying, because she's like, Como doesn't love me, and I'm like, Como loves you a lot. He loves her. Who wouldn't yeah. love her? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Kylie's so lovable. Well, we've always said, I don't know if we said this on pod, but if y- y'all ever break up, we're choosing her. Yeah. yeah. So In the me, breakup. Like, multiple members of the family. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> well... Pressure. <laughs> um. So yeah. So 
Um, I wanted to talk about our Swedish mystery, too, briefly. Oh. As, as you referred to it, Aaron. Okay. <laughs> I forgot I called it that. <laughs> we, um, I've been looking at kind of our, like, analytics, and our second most downloads, like, uh, uh, geographically after the United States, which makes sense because we listen to our own show a lot, um, is Sweden. Um, and it seems pretty consistently that every time that we put out a new episode, there is pretty soon after that a download from Sweden. Um, so I... Shout out to Sweden. Shout out to Sweden and whoever's listening in Sweden. And if you're interested in reaching out, we would love to hear from you if you're listening to this yeah. in Sweden, because yeah. it's kind of cool that I just happened to notice that. And, like, how you heard of us yeah. being in Sweden. Yeah. It'd be cool, too. Um, so, welcome to all of our international listeners. Um, and then, uh, yeah, should we uh, should we do homework? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Aaron, you, you're first. Well, if you listen to my segment, you've already watched Stranger Things. I hope. Um, maybe rewatch season one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, gosh. Eat an ego waffle, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ego. Always ego. good advice. What's your Twitter? Um, at Earnburn. And I have not posted a lesbian movie review. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. I know. Aaron. I'm sorry. I've just been on that breast. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's like the whole reason for this is that we're a family of like ADD interests. It's not that I'm not interested in it. I just haven't been, you know, it's like an ebb and a flow. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's fair. So I haven't been as driven, but it will happen again. I agree with you. Yeah, but that's at lesbian movie reviews. There's still a good amount up, so. Watch season one and eat an Eggo waffle. Ew. Okay. Um, my homework is to not sexually assault people. <laughs> it's really easy. That's the it's, easiest my homework. homework is the easiest homework we've ever given. <laughs> That's right. Also, That's like, right. don't be a piece of shit. I also, Jen's I want to too. give a shout in um, to Ben for being such a good... Um, advocate and ally also not that we should again congratulate men for being decent yeah. humans but you know i guess um i'm trying to head off criticism we probably won't get about the one man <laughs> in our episode mansplaining feminism to us but i don't feel at all like that's what ben did i think he did a really good nuanced yeah i hope i didn't because I, I, I don't know it's um I, I do sometimes feel like I can't even really appreciate some of the perspectives because I'm not a woman, but I, I also feel like um, being a man, I, I I hope I can offer like some, I don't know, some perspectives like how I've been in, I've been in a position like where men are, other men are talking about women in bad ways and I've been in a locker room kind of situation and I don't know. I just hope I can offer some other perspectives also that might be helpful for people. I don't know what I'm what I'm saying. I just think it's you're saying <laughs> words. Those are what yeah. you're saying. I just think it's important because I think about it in relation to race uh, a lot lately too. That mm-hmm. you know people who who are like who look a certain way that you know apologists might respect more. In, in, in an unearned sense that mm-hmm. those people also speak up so mm-hmm. um yeah i think it's important for everyone to speak up so i like it i appreciate <laughs> it too cool oh and my twitter is um at any disco greg daily pictures and videos of my cat yeah and speak i, I realized today that i really should just be have an instagram for como because like Essentially, what I'm using my Twitter for is to, like, curate the huge number of photos <laughs> that I have on my phone. Yeah, you're on the wrong the medium there, bro. I'm literally room. doing Instagram on Twitter. Yeah. And you can, <laughs> persist it, you can persist it to Twitter from Instagram. You could, yeah. you could ex-post it to both. 
I should probably do that. What? Cross post. <laughs> Capi- you could lowercase t post it. See how that sounds, Anna? Sideways lowercase t. But no, it's a cross. Oh, okay. Post name. All right, I got you. I got you. Like Jesus, Anna? Yeah. Yeah. Like Jesus. Yeah. Like Jesus. Um, so my homework is watch pretty much any episode of My Cat from Hell. The last season has been pretty good because he also does a segment uh, called My Cat from Heaven and it makes me cry a lot of the time. Um, so uh-huh. if you're into that. Oh, yeah, there's my heaven cat. <laughs> um, in fact, uh, that, that cat that um, that rescued that little boy from that dog was on uh, oh, was, yeah. was one of the cats from heaven on the show. It was good. Aww. What, um, where do you watch this show? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it's actually, it's fairly hard to find on streaming platforms. I've been watching it on my parents, um, Comcast, or Xfinity streaming online. Um, so it, if, gotcha. uh, it airs on Animal Planet. So also if you have Animal Planet in your life, because I guess some people do still have TV. Then you can find it there. I wish it had a less sensational name. I always assumed it was like, uh, I don't know what I assumed. I guess I thought it was more trashy than it is based on the name. Yeah, I get that. It's really not at all, uh, not much like the name at all. Although, I mean, some of the cats really are, when he first gets there, like extremely difficult cases and, you know, making things really difficult for their guardians. But, like I said, a lot of the times it's the owners. Uh, my Twitter is ha- at Hanthropology. And if you want to talk to us about any of the stuff we talked about today, uh, you can email us, waytoobroad at gmail.com. Um, you can also tweet at us at TooBroadPod, T-O-O, broad pod, like a pod of narwhals. Um, you can, um, that's mostly it. I guess you can tweet at us individually too. Well, we can. We should talk about the exciting, exciting events upcoming for next week. We have. We'll probably be recording a whole slew of. Specials. Yes, that's true. That's true. We're gonna be face to face next week. So, which I predict will make us like a hundred times more geeky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're probably right. That's probably true. Yeah. Because we'll also be drinking copious amounts. Of I was going to say Beaujolais Nouveau. Nouveau, but I'm just going to full stop. Copious at that amounts. Sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Period. Yep. And we'll have probably a number of special guests and um, all kinds of potential special episodes that may be rolling out mm-hmm. in the following weeks. So that's exciting. Thanksgiving is the greatest time of the year in the Brown family. Yes. Yeah, so much. <laughs> So if, so yeah, leave us a review and thanks for listening. Subscribe. And subscribe and we love you. Love you. (laughs) Bye.